Gaim is bad and you should feel bad. Look, I don't like Kamen Rider Gaim. I'm gonna explain why I don't like Kamen Rider Gaim, but first, let me preface this. The show itself is fine. A lot of the characters are pretty well written. The costume design is some of the best that Kamen Rider has had in years. It's really inventive and really creative. The theme is one of the best in all of Kamen Rider. And while it was airing, there was a portion of the fan base that kind of overhyped it a, a little bit. Ultimately, show's fine. If you like the show, great. Love the show. I'm not trying to say you're wrong. I'm just trying to say my point of view. And that point of view is, I just don't like it now. Yeah, I liked it when it was airing. I liked it week to week, but I just don't like it now. Looking back on it, it creates a pit in my stomach. It feels wrong. Because I don't think Common Rider Gaim is a good common Rider in any definition of that phrase whatsoever. Like, to me, what defines a common Rider is... Think of it this way. When you say Superman, you think of an ethos and a moral code. You think of a general concept that every single Superman, no matter what version of it, will do. They fight for truth, they fight for justice, and they fight against corruption. Whether that be in the original comics where he fights capitalists and landlords, or in the current ones where he fights against Lex Luthor who wishes to abuse power. Or think of Spider-Man. You know, with great power must also come great responsibility, and how any power you have should be used accordingly and responsibly. And that is Spider-Man's whole thing. Everything in Spider-Man is related to that. Every single version. So superheroes have this code built into their character. I think Kamen Rider has one as well, and it's kind of simple. Fight against corrupted authority, even if you need to use that authority's power. You know, it kind of makes sense for Kamen Rider, right? Like saying it's kind of a no duh that, yeah that's every common writer but just to be sure let's just go through the list ichigo nigo v3 writer man x amazon stronger sky writer super one and zx all of them fight fascist terrorist organizations with technology or abilities that the organizations want to get their hands on or that they themselves develop Black fights against a religious cult that him and his brother are seen as messianic figures. Black RX fights an organization that wishes to misuse his messianic style powers. Shin fights against an organization who modifies DNA in order to make super soldiers. Zeto fights against a created organism who absorbs others in order to become perfect. J fights against the physical embodiment of pollution. Kuga, he fights the Gorongi, who only see people as game tokens. Agito, <laughs> he fights lords, who wish to inhibit humans' growth. Ryuki, well, he fights other writers who wish to abuse power. Fize fights the Orpanok, who wish to supplant humanity. Blade fights in a game that threatens humanity. Hibiki, well, they fight an unrelenting natural phenomenon. Kabuto goes against the worms who are taking over people. Deno, well, he fights the Imagine, who wish to disrupt time. Kiva, he fights the Fangires, who do not care about humanity. Then you have Decade, who fights against the universe itself in order to justify his own existence. Double, who fights an organization who wishes to misuse information given to them by the Earth. O's, who fights against the personifications of overconsumption. Forze, well, he fights against teachers who would misuse their position for power. Wizard, fights the personification of depression. Gaim, he fights against a man who wishes to make humanity evolve against their own will. Gaim lets him get away. Not just get away, but get away and go to another planet. Get away, go to another planet, and start the whole process over again. The whole process that has ruined his life, his friend's life, his family's life, the life of the entire town he lives in. It has ruined them, and he lets this man get away. Scott Free. Nothing happens to him. And you may say, oh, but he helps rebuild. You know, the whole Eden thing. He he builds up a new town. Nope. Gaim fucks off to another planet and leaves them alone to deal with the trauma that they've just been through and rebuild without him. At the end, he trusts what the villain says more than his own heart 
and does not help his friends and allies. Our hero, everybody. Kids are supposed to look up to this man. And this hurts even more when you think about the theme of the show. See, I have this theory. Every single season of Kamen Rider has a unifying theme within its series. They can be pretty simple, like O's is all about greed and all that kind of stuff. Forza is all about growing by learning about other people. Or they can be completely complex, like Drive is all about overcoming previous abuse and trauma. Or X-Aid, which is all about the interconnectivity of capitalist structures and medicine. See, I believe that Gaim's overarching concept is responsibility. You can see it within every character. Every character takes a form of responsibility, whether it be responsibility for sake of power, responsibility for a community, responsibility to protect others. Responsibility is a major theme throughout. Yet Kota, our main character, our hero, doesn't take responsibility. And in any other show, by the end, he would. He would understand that he has a duty and a need to be responsible for his actions, but this entire show, he just floats along. Power-ups are given to him. He doesn't earn them. He doesn't make them himself. The bad guy goes, hey, you're gonna need this soon. And he just takes it, accepts it. And at the end, the one act of responsibility he does is to run away and not take a real earthly responsibility for his friends and community. Now, you may look at all of this, all of the things I've been saying, all of the show, and go, well, all of that's fine. It's completely fine and natural. It's a deconstruction, boingo. Of course they're gonna break the rules. It's a deconstruction. Of course the bad guy can get away. It's a deconstruction. Come on, you know that. Yeah, I know that. But here's the thing. Deconstruction is not a literary tool. Deconstruction should only be used as a tool when analyzing a piece of meat. Watchmen isn't good because it's a deconstruction. Watchmen is good because it was well written and talking about something. Okay, take for example, one of the biggest pieces of deconstruction media, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Now, we can all agree that it pretty much is a deconstruction. It's understood. It is deconstructing the idea of the mecha anime genre. Basically saying, yeah, you know, it's kind of fucky putting a young boy in a giant war machine and expecting them to fight. Yeah, it's kind of screwed up, right? And writing a whole series about that. But ultimately making the original version, at least, about how with friends and family, he can overcome it. People didn't like that and they just got more depressing. But let's look on the flip side of this at Gurren Lagan, which is also a deconstruction of the mecha genre but specifically a deconstruction of the mecha genre spawned from Neon Genesis Evangelion. Gurren Lagann was basically looking at the landscape of mecha anime and said, wow, this is depressing. Remember when robots were cool? Yeah, putting a kid in there is kind of screwed up, but ultimately the idea of the human spirit can break through that and become bigger than that. It can overtake a galaxy because of how powerful the human identity is. These are both deconstructions of the mecha genre, but they are both opposed with their ideology, okay? So deconstruction is not ultimately, oh, it's fine, it's depressing. It's looking at the context of where it's at and breaking it down and putting it back together again, which means Kamen Rider Gaim needs to look at and take apart tokusatsu and Kamen Rider specifically. But here's the unique thing about Kamen Rider. Every single season is a deconstruction of Kamen Rider because every single season looks at the past, the future, where it's at now, and the original text riffs on it. It plays on it, says different things about it. Like what if the Kamen Rider was a horrific genetic monster? What if the Kamen Rider was a different alien species that's trying to take over humanity and it just wants to help instead? What if the Kamen Rider was seen as evil by everybody? Kamen Rider is inherently a deconstructionist series because because every season deconstructs every season that comes before it. Gaim does not get a pass on this. And what does Gaim say in its deconstruction of Kamen Rider? That heroes are worthless? That heroes don't actually do anything? 
that ultimately you put a naive, hopeful, optimistic person through a situation like this and they will, at the end of the day, be broken? <laughs> That it's perfectly fine to let an authoritative jackass get away with everything just because not that many people died. Gaim, uh, Gaim is fine. Common writer Gaim just rubs me the wrong way. See, see, I believe superheroes are created for a reason, similar to Grant Moore. Heroes are designed to lead us to a better place, morally, uh, ethically, conceptually, in the nature of humanity. Superman is what we should be becoming. But when a hero doesn't act like one, it feels wrong. This is the same reason why people so disliked Batman v Superman. Because the people who know what these characters are supposed to be like, aren't acting like heroes. I know what a common Rider is supposed to behave like. I've seen plenty of common Rider. But Gaim doesn't act like a common Rider. Common... <laughs> Gaim doesn't feel like a common Rider. Gaim feels like a tragedy in the shape of a common.